Everyone who has ever been to Berlin knows it's a huge city. It's nine times bigger than Paris and has even more land size than New York City. If you want to walk from one side of the city to the other one, it will take you a staggering amount of seven and a half hours. It's almost 40 kilometers. But how did this city with a population of just four million become so big? To answer this question, we have to take a look at its history. And there's one day in particular that made all the difference, which basically made Berlin a world city overnight. Berlin was founded around the year 1240 as a trading post, right next to the river Spree, which totally made sense, because most of the trading back then was done by ships. There was actually another city just across the river, which was called Köln. Here's a map from 1652. That's the Spree Insel, which we know today as Museums Island. And that's the part next to Alexanderplatz. The double city of Berlin-Köln had a size of 70 hectare, or approximately 130 football fields. Back then, cities had a much smaller population. What was called a city back then, we would call today a village. In the 16th century, Berlin-Köln had a population of barely 12,000. And in the surrounding area, there were actually dozens of cities sprinkled all around. From the 16th century on, the man in power followed an unusual open immigration policy and religious liberty. They did that to compete economically with other parts of the kingdom. That led to a huge influx of other Europeans, especially large groups of French, Polish and Austrians. Around 1700, around 20% of Berlin's population was French. And they still keep coming. That's already when Berlin started to become international. The next chapter began with the rule of this guy, Friedrich III, who made Berlin the capital of the mighty state of Prussia. From then on, the city grew quickly in cultural, militaristical and economical importance. But it was not until the 18th century when things really started to kick off with the industrialization. Berlin became an economic powerhouse with countless of factories, which led millions of people to the city in search for jobs. Within a hundred years, Berlin's population grew from 200,000 to 2 million. And then came 1920. Even in 1920, the Berlin we know today didn't exist. There was a city of Berlin but it only had 10% of the land size that it has today, with 2 million people living in it. And many of today's Berlin districts, like Schöneberg, Kreuzberg, Wilmersdorf and Charlottenburg, were small independent cities. This was all about to change on April the 27th, 1920, the day of the Prussian State Assembly, where a new law came into place to develop a new city commune. On that day, they officially decided to merge all those cities. So Berlin, historically, isn't one city, but a conglomerate of many small cities and villages that have grown together, though it wasn't an easy process to get there. In the years before, there was civil unrest between the small cities. The First World War was just lost and the Spanish flu had taken their toll. The regional structure was very hurtful and messy. So it was clear that the formation of Groß Berlin was necessary. Until April the 27th, 1920, Berlin had seven neighboring cities, 59 neighboring villages and 72 manor boroughs. Overnight, the population of Berlin doubled, making it the third biggest city in the world by population. Only New York and London had more people living in it and the second biggest city by size, only outranked by Los Angeles. Which is much in contrast to the Berlin today, which ranks somewhere at place 50. Back then, Berlin was an economic powerhouse, with factories everywhere. It probably wasn't a nice place to live. 
From then on, the new city was on its way. And there was one thing everyone agreed on. Don't become like Paris. Which was for the mayors a frightening example. In Berlin they didn't want embellishment, no facelifting, Prussian mentality at its finest. It had to be pragmatic and thrifty. But that all changed in the Second World War, when large parts of Berlin were completely bombed away. And here's something I bet you didn't know. Berlin is almost completely flat and most hills that exist were made out of debris. 14 hills were formed, like the famous Teufelsberg, Volkspark Friedrichshain and the Insulana in Schöneberg. They all are made out of an estimated 400 to 500 million cubic meters of rubble. After the war, the development of the city was completely defined by the separation in East and West. From then on, the first priority was to rebuild housing for everyone, which ended up in many of the beautiful buildings Berlin has today. And second of all, to show off what could be done within the two competing systems of communism and capitalism, which ultimately brought to life some of Berlin's strangest buildings. Actually, you can still see the separation of Berlin to this day from space. Because the lanterns that were put up back then remain in use with different types of lights. But how the city developed during the Cold War and after reunification is a whole different story. That would require its own video. Even though the decision of merging all the small cities into one major one was made over a hundred years ago, you can still feel this very much today. Every district feels and looks completely different, which is one of the things that makes Berlin so special. So there you have it. Since its very beginning, 800 years ago, Berlin has been a place of change. That seems to be the only constant, going through the weirdest of times. Already in 1910, a wise man has stated that Berlin as a city is condemned forever to become and never to be. A site in perpetual and restless flux, ever transfiguring itself into something new. Little did he know how right he was.